Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1150. Just 50 away from 1200. Woo. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway. Located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Today we hear from Adam Rudabega, Valentino Bison Bentley. And we are so honored to have back Marco again for the Marco Minute. We talk sports, culture, all kinds of stuff. Mike's Daily Podcast. And... You know, there's that wonderful singer you may have heard of. Mike's Daily Podcast. Who sings that song? Hello from the other side. I must have tried a thousand times just to say I'm sorry. Adele, she went to an H&M and then something happened and she had a little fight with them because they turned down her credit card. Adele got turned down Mike's Daily Podcast at a, I think it was a San Francisco H&M. Okay, of all the places for Adele Mike's to get turned down Daily to get her credit card revoked. Podcast. I mean, they know who she is, don't they? Yeah. At H&M? I mean, I would understand at a Harley Davidson store, but H&M. That's all they listen to is Adele, right? Am I right? And I hope you've enjoyed the beginning, the stand-up portion of our podcast today. Oh, look, I just walked in. Hello, my name is Adele. Vega. I love the Adele. You do? Yes. She has a beautiful voice. Ooh. Look who else just walked in. Hello, Mike. It's Valentino, the parking attendant. It is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, we're happy that today you're talking sports with Marco D. Yeah, Marco. Do you know that? Excellent. Let's get to that right away then. Okay. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. It's a wonderful place you can go to to hear past interviews, past Marco Minutes. You can check out the podcast pictures there that I've done a whole bunch. Speaking of today's podcast picture. And here's today's podcast picture. It's of the wonderful place known as Jack London Square. I went there yesterday. It was so hot. So I said, hey, I'm going to go down to the bay and cool off. And I took my dog, Basil the Boxer. And in the podcast picture, you can see, since Jack London wrote about dogs and about huskies and wolves and such, uh, well, he they had to put up a little statue in honor of that. There's one of the um, wolves. And you can see that as well as, for some reason, there are a bunch of bikes on the lampposts. There's a lot of bicycle riding there in Jack London Square. There's that uh, bicycle coffee is down there too. And blue bottle coffee at Jack London Square. So, and Plank, which MC Hammer owns. You can't touch this. And they have the bocce ball and bowling and drinks and an outdoor patio area, which I did not imbibe in. I didn't have the time. I and I'm done giving them a free plug because they're not going to give me a free drink or anything. So screw them. You know what? Let's get to the Marco Min. Oh, if you want to help out the show, Amazon.com. Click on that Amazon link. Buy whatever it is you're going to buy on Amazon. That helps us out tremendously. Thank you for doing that. And you're you know you're just shopping on Amazon anyway, buying you know several cases of toilet paper. So just click on that first before you do that. And it helps us out. Also, there is the PayPal. If you'd like to donate to the show, you'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. It's wonderful. So go there now. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. And you can also email any questions to Marco there. There's links there. We do the emails from email and your comment, not so comments. You can comment on Facebook or, or Twitter or what have you. So check that all out. Mike's Daily Podcast. Dot com. And now, the Marco Minute. The Marco Minute. The Marco Minute. Marco. His name is Marco. <laughs> is this a mic check? Mike. <laughs> did, did I give you a check? No, you didn't. Yet, oh. so, so I got to go 1220 KDOW. <laughs> Wall Street Business Network. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's talk money. All right. With uh, Marco is here, everyone. Woohoo! Hey! Uh, we have an applause sound effect for you. 
took me three hours to find it. Where is it? Talk, tick, talk. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Nice. I have all kinds of crazy sound effects. Look at that. We got a sound effects now. We're just like so stepping up in the world. This is awesome. Yay. <laughs> What's going on, Mike? Not much, Marco. It's great to have you back. And the Olympics are happening. I'm not watching them. What's going on? Um, well, you know, I have to be um, a little honest here and say um, I haven't really haven't been watching him that much either. Uh, however, though, I do know I do know what's going on though. Uh, <laughs> I, I know the our the women our women's USA. I should say USA Women's Gymnastics. I can't say R because, you know, this is an international podcast, right? There's people from all over the world listening, yes? Yeah, but they know we're Americans. Okay, well, all right. Just to, just to clarify, though, the USA Women's uh, Gymnastics team just kicked ass this past couple of days. They took the, uh, the team all around uh, competition. They won by eight points over those uh, nasty Russians. And uh, I know, right? But you know, it's funny because uh, according to my roommate, who's uh, who was it? <laughs> nice. According to my roommate, who's who used to do gymnastics, and the only reason why I, I wait, wa- your roommate used to do gymnastics. She used to do gymnastics, and so you know, you have a woman roommate who used to do gymnastics. Yes, lucky acrobatic gymnastics too. Oh, yeah. So she's she so she's so hardcore about gymnastics, right? So she was watching it and telling me how the reason they won by so much is because this is like the best team ever, and and they won by eight points, which is I guess if you. Taken like a football terms, that means they beat Russia like seventy to seven. That's all. That's all. What? How, how amazing they were, and how much they kicked ass in this in this competition right now. So yeah. Oh, so that they really say what? That's really amazing. It is. So they are doing well. Those lovely ladies in gymnastics. Um, Michael Phelps continues to smoke weed and just get gold medals. <laughs> you gotta love that guy, man. I love him. Yeah, yeah. he's like he's, like, he's he just won two more. I think yesterday or the day before, so he's up to like 22 gold medals for his career. 22 gold, not just medals, but gold medals. That's the most by any athlete I think ever. He's like the oldest to win a gold medal in swimming. He's like 31 now. And uh, yeah, so he's, we're, we're on top. The Americans are at top of the leaderboard right now as far as medals are concerned. I think we're up 33 to like 24. Four, I think China's second right now. So, you know, and they all cheat. So those medals don't even count as far, as far as I'm concerned. And the Russians aren't even, are they even in this? I think they're top six right now. Oh. But yeah, they're not even close to the Americans. Only only the Chinese are. And, and not, they're not even that close. So, you know, we're just kicking ass and shooting. Maybe there's like an air rifle competition. Uh-huh. That, that, that was like the first gold medal that the Americans Is won. Is an air rifle like an air guitar? Like it's not real? No, it's real. Oh. Yeah. You could, uh. You could uh, die if someone were to think oh. with it. At least, I don't know. I, but then again, I don't really know that much about guns. So this is just all <laughs> hypothesis, I guess. <laughs> hypothesis. Hyperbole. Hyperbole. That too. How many bongs do you think Michael Phelps has? I would say he does at least two to three after every competition. I mean, the yeah. guy's got to relax. You know, swimming takes a lot out of you. That's a, yeah. a very um, high endurance sport. And not only do you have to be, you know, have the endurance, but you got to be fast like he is. And so I would think that that's a two to three bong sport at least. <laughs> Michael Phelps looks a little like Mark Zuckerberg to me. You think so? I don't think I don't see the resemblance at all. Mark Zuckerberg is, is a big, tall, dorky nerd. Michael Phelps is, you know, big, strong, awesome swimmer, dude. I don't know. I, I don't see the resemblance, but Mark Zuckerberg is Michael Phelps' rich, nerdy brother. There you go. Yeah, younger brother, right? Okay, I, I, I guess I could, I could see that. But they're, but they're both big, successful people. Winning. Yeah, they have, <laughs> they have more money than I do right now. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what else? You're a big winner tonight. You're a big winner. <laughs> You're just busting out all the sound effects today, aren't you? <laughs> wait, wait, one more for you. All right. Great googly moogly. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> all right. So Michael Phelps. Uh, Olympics, Napoleon Kaufman. Yes, Napoleon Kaufman, the, uh, the ex former. That's 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 redundant, isn't it? The ex former. <laughs> uh, but you hear you hear that all the time, right? So it's like it's embedded in your brain. Anyway, the ex great Raider, Oakland Raider, stopped by uh, our 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 business building yesterday, and because uh, he's a, guess a, a client of ours, which I found out, and it was so awesome. He came in to do a recording, and this guy I watched. You know, straight out of college, we're about the same age. 
So when he so when he came out of Washington University or University of Washington and got drafted by the Oakland Raiders, you know, I was right at San Diego State at the time, and so watching this guy just you know. He's a running back, just to let you, just for to, to clarify, you know what his position was. Uh-huh. Um, he was so fast. I mean, he was like a, a a bullet being shot out of a gun. Once he broke through a hole, you weren't going to catch him. No, wow. no defending def- defensive back could catch this guy. He was that quick. In fact, the Raiders would use him on kickoff returns. Uh, there was just you know it was the start of the game, the start of the first half. Whenever there's a touchdown scored, you know you got the kickoff. So um, he was, and and he was so fast that he would. Just, you know, all he needed was one little seam, and he would just break through it, go 100 yards, score a touchdown, and, you know, it'd make me happy because I'm a Raiders fan. So, Wow. That so, was the guy that was here. That was the guy that was here. So it was an honor to meet him yesterday and get a, got a picture with him, threw it on my Facebook, and uh, it, he was such a cool, down-to-earth guy. You know, I, I most athletes, you know, even when they're – Pastor Prime, they're not playing anymore. They're, they're kind of divas, you know. They're uh-huh. kind of a, you know, don't bother me. Yeah. This guy was so cool. He just said hi. He shook my hand. He he was just such in a good mood the whole time. Yeah. I mean, and you got to do the interview. You were producing the interview with y- him and yes, Craig. I, I was. I did produce the interview, uh, and it was so funny because um, you know at the end of it, Craig goes, uh, "Oh, okay, so now you can record us." I'm like, "Yeah, whenever you're ready, I, I'm, I'm going to hit record right now." And you just seen the look on the on the polling coppin's face. You look back at me. I mean, like. Say what? He, he didn't say say what, but he had the look, you know. And I'm just like, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> so say what? There you go. Okay, I was a little slow. A little bit. Uh, are you caffeinated yet? You're not caffeinated yet, are you? No. Yeah. I, I need some more uh, coffee. Would you like some coffee? <laughs> when the coffee's first rate, so is everything else. <laughs> That's all the coffee I. Ca- yeah. Napoleon coffee. Napoleon coffee. Mm, beer. Oh, that's something different. I, I can go for beer right now. Actually. But you know what goes good with coffee? Mm, donuts. Oh, I go for one of those right now. Actually, I could go for a whole box of those right now. <laughs> anyway, so Napoleon Kaufman, nice guy. He went. To, I went to shake his hand, and I was um, going to do a t- traditional white handshake right. with him. And he did the total like you know wanted to do the cool handshake. Yeah. And and I I but he went with the stupid old white man handshake with me because. But I could tell with his hand that he wanted to do the right, cool right. So I felt kind of stupid, but yeah, <laughs> he he's still in amazing shape too. He is. I, you know what? I really think if he really wanted to go back to the NFL, he probably could get on a couple teams. I mean, he yeah, most athletes too when they when they retire, yeah, they put on a few pounds just because they're not in that regimen of working out all the right. time, and you know, and that's what happens with your body if you're not constantly doing it. You put on weight. That's just the physiological, you know, yeah. thing that happens. So, uh, but for him, he looked like he was still back in his University of Washington playing days. It's, wow. Yeah, that's how awesome this guy stayed in shape. And it's cool because, you know, he still coaches football. He coaches at Bishop Odell. Oh. Uh, yeah. He coaches the football team there. Wow. And, you know, as well as, as, as that he does his preaching as well at his church. So, I mean, this guy, you know, stays active. He stays doing his thing. And, He's just such a, a, a down to earth good guy. You know, we don't have too many of those left yeah. in this world. So, thanks for Napoleon Kaufman coming and hanging out. And I got a chance to meet one of my one of my heroes because I totally loved the guy when he was with the Raiders. And it's only, he only played six years. Wow. He, he could have been Hall of Fame material had he played, you know, if he had doubled that. If he played about 10 to 12 years, yeah. he definitely could have had Hall of Fame stats. But he didn't. He just said, you know what? I have a different calling. I'm going to go. Uh, turn my life to God, to Jesus, and that's that's and that's he, my path, and that's uh, what he did. So huh. you know, you got to respect that, and you got to respect someone who says, you know what, I, there's something better out there. There's something more than just football, because most athletes are like us, all they know, and when they retire, they don't know what to do with their life because all they've known their whole entire life was that sport that they did. Right. So right. the fact that this guy knew what he wanted to do. You know, and, and and knowing he could have played another six, seven, who knows how many more years he could have played. That's just that's so much respect right there. Yeah. Oh, such a nice guy. Now, any other sports things going on? There's like baseball or something. Yeah, baseball uh, is starting to get into its, uh, you know, uh, this pennant races. It's really starting to pick up steam, should I say. We're in the dog days of August, and this is where like, 
players get to this point and they get start feeling tired, they start feeling fatigued because yeah. they're playing. It's in August. Uh, the weather's crappy with the heat and the humidity, especially if you're out on the East Coast. I mean, uh, granted, we're we're awesome out here on the West Coast. We don't ever get humidity. Thank God, because I could not live through that. I, you'll never see me live in the Southeast ever, ever. Yeah, because of that. <laughs> so um, right now, the Giants are just barely hanging on by the. I don't know what's what's a good analogy there. I can't even think right now because it's too early. By a thread. There you go, Th- hanging on by a thread. You know the last uh, what thing about what's the last what they say about the rope. The uh, last uh, you're you're at the your rope for the end la- of your rope. End of my yeah. So whatever. See, that's what happens when I'm not caffeinated <laughs> at this time of the day. Uh, <laughs> they got a one game lead over the Dodgers. Uh, it's going to go down to the wire. Uh, but they look. It looks like they're starting to put their their. Their you know team together. Uh, the only thing that's not working right now is their offense. They still can't score runs to save their lives. So, oh, but if they get that, if they fix that in the next, I would say the next three weeks because they're going to be at. They don't leave Cal- the state of California for the rest of August. They're, nice, I like that one. Yeah, they they are they are at home in San Francisco in their friendly confines of AT and T Park. Really, for the next three weeks, they just do three games in LA, so they don't leave California the entire the rest of this month in August. Oh, okay. So there's, wow. there's if, if if there's a time for them to make a run to get their shit together, this is it. This is it. They just need to focus. Yes, <coughs> they need to pull their heads out of their ass right now. Is what they need to do. Because they were the best team in the first half, and they've been the worst team to start the second half. So something's got to give. Uh, oh, man, I should have played this when we were talking about the Raiders. Oh, my. You have the autumn wind, and you didn't play that? Oh. Okay. I'm so disappointed in you right now, Mike. <laughs> but, you know what they say? Better late than never. Thank yeah. you. I, didn't, I also have this, Where'd you too. find that? <laughs> nice. Uh. We had it in here for some reason. How come I've never seen that? What what page is that on? It's well, look it up under Raiders Bump. It's called Raiders Bump. Oh, okay. Um, versus Baby Bump, which is yeah. yeah, that usually happens after you have the baby bump, right? All right. Did I just bring us down? I think so. With the whole baby thing. <laughs> Go back and play the bottom win again. <laughs> okay. But without babies, we wouldn't have future football players. That's true. We wouldn't have future Raiders to, you know, make make them great again. So, yeah. Any oh, other? that's just another thing. Football starting up soon. In fact, the first preseason games start, actually, they start today. The Raiders' first preseason game is on Friday, and the Niners' one is on Sunday. So, football oh. is back. Yeah. Yeah. Give, give me a applause there. Come on. Uh, I have it on a or, different or give page. Me a woo-hoo. Oh, I was going to say, give me a woohoo. woo-hoo. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. So, we got the Olympics. We got baseball. We got football. Um, yeah. See, August is not such a boring month. Yeah. There's so much to do. Exactly. And go to strip clubs. That too. You know, unfortunately, I didn't get to visit my favorite one in Vegas this past weekend because. Oh, how was Vegas? I forgot to ask about Vegas. Yeah, Vegas was. Well, it's funny. I was. I would say that was the shortest time I've ever was in Vegas. It was 32 hours from the time I got off the plane to the time oh. I got out to my. So here's the thing, right? So it's Friday night. I'm supposed to leave the last. It's supposed to be 9:30, the last Southwest flight out of San Jose because they have a curfew. You can't fly anything after 11 o'clock. Yeah. Come, yeah. Well, you know, I get this email about five ish that day and says, Oh, it's from Southwest Airlines saying, Yeah, guess what? Your flight's delayed. <gasps> I'm like, No. Or where do you get do you have the Steve Carell office going, No, no, no. Do you have that? That's no, that's like my that's something I do not have. Oh, that's like the that's like the best <laughs> soundbite ever. <laughs> anyway, so then I get there and it's like first it says it's only gonna be delayed um to ten like 15. I'm like, okay, that's not so bad. And then I, uh, once I get to the airport, it's at 1030. Then I'm like, all right. And then 10 minutes later, it says 1040. And then I'm like, how, how long are we going to keep this? And finally, it was like 1055 is when it was boarding time. Whoa. And so I went to the original Joe's, had a couple beers, watched the opening ceremonies. And then finally, it was like 11 o'clock or it's time to board. We actually didn't even get off the air. Into, you know, in, into the air. Into the air. I'm sorry. We didn't get into the air. Off the ground is what off I was trying to say. Off the ground, into the air until 11:30. Wow. I yeah. So I finally I fly into Vegas about 12. 
uh, about twelve thirty. So about they an broke, hour flight. They broke their own curfew rule. Yes, they well oh. they had to. Yeah. They, they had to. They oh, couldn't. Thank they, goodness. Well, yeah. They. I mean, people have paid for that flight. They were not going to delay them a whole. You know what? Yeah. Extra day, or you know, another what? Ten hours to what? Six o'clock in the morning or whatever. So now yeah, they had to. Actually, that's more like eight hours, right? Or seven. Anyway, uh, they they had to fly. Pe- they had to get those flights out. They had to. So because there was there was like one flight to Vegas. I think there was another flight to Phoenix. That they were all, and all those flights were delayed because I guess there was some kind of storm happening back east that was oh. that was delaying those plane, planes from coming in to San Jose, uh-huh. which is always, I'm always like, why can't you just have like planes ready to go like in San Jose or like in L A or San Diego where you could they can just come up, you know, yeah. if something like that happens, is, is that too okay. much for me to ask for something like that? Am I crazy? Yeah. No, it's not part of their business plan. I guess not. So anyway, I didn't even get into I didn't even get into my hotel until one a.m. You know, uh. but but I got some sleep and um, you know went and, and the whole purpose of this trip it was it was a business trip. It wasn't a pleasure trip. That's why I didn't go to any strip clubs. Uh. And the business of it was me getting a new truck finally. Yay! After almost two decades. Yeah, actually, actually, you should play the Darth Vader, the Imperial Empire Strikes Back theme for that. I'm not your little monkey. You can tell me to do. Th- <laughs> hey, why don't you you started it? All right, there you go. Nice. Now you have your truck. Yeah. So I'm, I got my truck. It's awesome. Um, I'm happy. No, I, I'm so happy that uh, and I and I broke I broke it in. So that was the thing. I flew into Vegas. Friday night. Well, I guess it was Sunday, Saturday morning now. And then I drove back Sunday morning and uh, it was great. Uh, I was able to break it in and um, nice. drive's great. And you had a bunch of traffic on the way back. Yeah, the traffic sucked. This is why I never leave. Like, if, I, if I drive to Vegas, I never leave on a Sunday because I know that's exactly what's going to happen. You're mm. going to be stuck right at the border. And when I say the border, I mean California and Nevada, not Mexico, U.S. Okay, just, Which will just, soon have a wall. Exactly. Because I I'm going to build a wall. Yeah. And he's, and then Mexico's going to pay for it. Yeah. I just, I just love I the. I will make them pay for yeah, it. Yeah. I just love the uh, whole. Uh, he's. The, yeah. That guy had a nice upbringing that the parents made him so full of himself. Right. You know, just and right. all that confidence. Exactly. Brimming. Right. So that's why. Anyway, back to the story. That's why I don't drive on a Sunday because it took me 10 hours to drive back here when it normally takes only eight because uh, it was bumper to bumper really from like like i said the border at prim prim's the border uh, of, the, of uh, california and nevada and then all the way up up to 15 was horrible because you had all the socal people tr- going back to la yeah the 58 was okay because there was not many people traveling through the desert but then once i got on the five normally you can average about 80 85 when yeah. you drive the five i was lucky if i was average, averaging 55 yeah it was that bad the whole entire boring ass drive up from Bakersfield. That's like what three and a half hours turned into like five hours. Oh, yeah. all the, ca- a bit. the cow smells and everything. Yeah, well, you get well, you get that right at uh, the, what is it? Is it Kalinga where they have all the cows? The Har- where's Harris Ranch? That's where all the cows are at. What part, oh, what is that? I don't remember. But anyway, uh, yeah, you should move a lot faster on five. Yes, yeah, especially when you hit that part. And you, and I wasn't. I was. I was like, I go about sixty and then stop. Then I go sixty five, stop. Then thirty five, stop. And it was like, oh God, why are there so many people here? But that's what happens when you drive back on a Sunday. So I always come back on a Monday and never have to worry about that. But this time around. I didn't have that choice. I had to come back on Sunday because, well, my job said I got to be here at 5 a.m. the next day. Oh, wait. We just got an email. There's a letter in your mailbox. (laughs) It says, Dear Marco, what did you do in Vegas? (laughs) (laughs) I guess they're a little late to the party there, right? But, yeah, so that's all I did. Did But did did you, did you like... Gamble or anything? No, I didn't get 